Algebra 1, Lesson 116, the quotient rule for square roots. Uh, so the quotient rule is very similar to the multiplication rule, and uh, the main thing we're going to be focusing on here is what we call rationalizing the denominator. I'll go over more of that in a second. So uh, let's start with our first example. So let's say we have to simplify the following radical expression. The square root of, whoops, there we go, the square root of 5 thirds. Okay, so we have to uh, simplify this. And the way we'd simplify this is using, using the quotient rule, uh, all it says is that if you have a fractional radical or um, a division uh, in, a, in a radical, you can rewrite it as two separate radicals being divided by each other. Um, so we could rewrite this as the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 3, and it's the same number. Now, once we do this, uh, we can see that our fraction has a, a rational number in the denominator. The square root of 3 being irrational because it's not a perfect square root, and the number stretches on infinitely with no repeating decimals, so we don't know exactly what number that is. Uh, so what rationalizing the denominator does is it gives us a more um, definite answer. It's very similar to the idea of not being able to divide by 0, since we don't know exactly what happens when we divide by 0. Uh, if we try to divide by an irrational number, then it skews our answer because we don't know exactly what the square root of 3 is. We have a very, very good idea, but in the end, uh, we'll never be able to accurately represent the square root of 3 as a decimal number or a fraction of integers. So since it's irrational, we want to make it a rational number. Now, how do we make the denominator a rational number? Well, we're going to use one of our favorite favorite excuse me favorite rules for fractions which is to multiply by the number one uh, so if we multiply by the number no, number one we can make a fraction and as long as we put the same number in the numerator and the denominator uh, we're multiplying by the number one and not changing the number so now the question becomes what can I multiply the square root of three by that will make it a whole number and the answer is uh, itself so if I take the square root of three times the square root of three and then I put that in the numerator, uh, I now have the number 1, and then if I multiply root 3 times root 3, I actually just get the number 3. Then I use my multiplication uh, rule for square roots, and then I know that the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 equals the square root of 15. All right, now by doing this, what I've done is I've rationalized the denominator. I now have a whole number instead of an irrational number, uh, and I have not changed the number at all because I multiplied by 1. All I did was rewrite the number, and this is considered a simpler form. So when you're asked to simplify, what you have to do is separate the numerator from the denominator and then multiply by a value of 1 represented with the denominator's number. So root 15 over 3 would be our final answer for this problem. And I'll go ahead and do a, a couple more examples because these can get a little more complex. Next example is going to be Let's say I've got 4 plus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. Now, in this example, the radical is already separated for me, so I don't have to do that separation step that I did up here. Uh, but I still have to rationalize the denominator. So all I'm going to do is multiply uh, by a value of 1 written with the denominator or the square root of 2. So I multiply this by root 2 over root 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 equals 2. Uh, and then in this numerator over here, what I have to do, since there's a plus or a minus sign here, and this is a polynomial, is I have to distribute the square root 2. So 4 times square root 2 equals 4 root 2. Root 3 times the square root of 2 equals the square root of 6. So I have 4 root 2 plus square root of 6. Um, and that is as simple as they want you guys to make it right now. And that would be your final answer. So this is pretty simple stuff. It's not too difficult. Uh, I'll go ahead and do, let me see here. Let's see if I can find one that actually gets a little complex. Here we go. This will probably be the hardest version of the problem that you get because we'll have to do a little bit of simplifying to our answer once we get this one. So let's say we've got the uh, or sorry, let's say we have 2 plus the square root of 15 over the square root of 5. So again, I need to rationalize the denominator. I do that by multiplying uh, by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. The denominator is very simple. That's just going to become 5. The numerator, again, I have to distribute because of that plus sign. 
So square root of 5 times 2 becomes 2 root 5. I put my plus sign. And then square root of 5 times square root of 15. Well, 5 times 15 is uh, 75. So now it becomes plus the square root of 75. Now, the reason why this cannot be our final answer is because the square root of 75 can be factored. So we want to simplify this number as much as we can. So I'll go ahead and factor the square root of 75. Uh, I already know that's going to become 5 times 15 because that's what I multiplied to create it. So 75 will factor into 5 and 15. Then 15 will factor into 5 and 3. And I'm all out of numbers, but I do have a pair of 5s here. So this number 75 gets rewritten as 5 times the square root of 3. So I'll take this, I'll plug it into my final answer. So what I get is 2 root 5 plus 5 times the square root of 3 all over the denominator of 5. And that is my final answer. If you guys have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.